Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Peace IT's session on Windows Operating System Features. Today we're going to be discussing 32-bit versus 64-bit operating systems, file structure, some core components of modern operating systems, and the upgrade paths for Windows. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. So we're going to begin with 32-bit versus 64-bit operating systems. And a lot of this is dependent upon the hardware that you have. If you have a 64-bit processor, then you can install either a 32-bit or 64-bit OS. But if you only have a 32-bit processor, guess what? You only get a 32-bit operating system. Now, a 32-bit operating system, you can only have a max of 4 gigabytes of RAM. That's all that's addressable. You can only run 32-bit software. 32-bit operating systems were the most common operating system in the past, and it's not quite as robust as 64-bit. 64-bit operating systems allow you to address a maximum of 192 gigabytes of RAM. Man, that's a lot. You can run both 32-bit and 64-bit software. It is becoming more and more common as we move into the future. And it's far more robust and it's much faster at multitasking than 32-bit operating system. Now here's a slide that shows how much RAM each version of Windows will address and also how many processors. If you notice, Ultimate and the Pro versions are the ones that are best if you want a powerhouse system. Now let's move on to file structure and we get to begin with FAT. FAT stands for File Allocation Table. It's how files and data are distributed on the hard drive. It's legacy and was developed in 1977. The original deployment of it was 8-bit. It had limited capabilities. Max partition was 4 gigabytes. Max file size was 2 gigabytes. FAT32 came along and it was a vast improvement. It's a 32-bit implementation. Its common usage today is in removable media like USB flash drives and camera memory cards. It had much better capabilities but it's still limited in its usability. Max partition is 32 gigabytes and a max file size is 4 gigabytes and it offers no file level security. That wasn't good enough for Microsoft, so they moved on to NTFS, New Technology File System, and it is proprietary to Microsoft. It's more secure. It allows for native drive encryption, both file and folder permissions as well. It's more efficient than FAT32 as well. You can also use native compression. It has more fault tolerance. It recognizes and recovers from some disk errors without the user having to intervene. It also allows for larger capacity. Let's move on to some core components of Windows operating systems. And we begin with administrative tools. All versions come with administrative tools. Those are located on the control panel and they allow you to configure and troubleshoot your system. All Windows operating systems have some backup program that comes bundled with them. Actually, it's built right into the operating system. Then there's compatibility mode. Especially in Vista in Windows 7 and Windows 8, sometimes they have difficulty running programs that were developed for Windows XP. You can run those in compatibility mode. All versions have an event viewer. That way you can check system logs for errors and events. Some versions allow you to join domains. That's much better networking than work groups. Offline files are also available in some versions. This is that means that you can download a file take it home on your laptop, modify it, and when you go back to work and you plug into the network, it gets resynced with the file on the server. It allows you to take it, work on it, change it, bring it back, and it will make sure that it stays up to date. All systems have system restore capabilities as well. This allows you to roll back to a previous state and it does not affect files or programs. It just it really helps recover when an installation of a program goes bad. Then there's Windows Defender. It protects the user against malware. Then there's Windows Firewall. It's a standalone software firewall that protects a PC from virus attacks. Then there's Arrow. 
This is for the desktop. It's a graphic enhancement that was introduced in Windows Vista and improved upon in Windows 7. Then we have User Account Control, UAC. It's a security control introduced in Windows Vista that separates administrative control from normal user accounts. Sometimes it's a bit of a nanny, but get used to it. Then there are gadgets. Gadgets are mini programs, think apps, that can be added to the sidebar in Windows Vista and to the desktop in Windows 7. Then there's BitLocker. BitLocker is available in some versions. It allows for whole drive encryption. Uh, one of the things that I will say is you can either compress your files or compress your drive or you can encrypt your drive, but you can't do both. Microsoft introduced Shadow Copy. It's used by Windows operating systems to create a copy of a file even when it's in use. And it can be configured to store the copy in almost any location. It's a great way to roll back what you're working on. Microsoft also introduced ReadyBoost. ReadyBoost is a way of using fast external storage, usually USB drives, as additional RAM, which can boost system performance. The external storage must be configured to be ReadyBoost ready. Let's talk about the upgrade path. Upgrade is moving from one edition or version of an operating system to another, and all programs and files are retained. The old system information is retained in a Windows file called windows.old. Upgrade paths. XP can be upgraded to Vista. Vista can be upgraded to 7, but XP cannot be upgraded directly to Windows 7. If you're running 32-bit, you can only upgrade to 32-bit. And if you're running 64-bit, you can only upgrade to 64-bit. Also, you can only upgrade to the same version or higher. That means if you're doing home premium, then you can go home premium and higher. But if you're going from ultimate version, you've got to go ultimate. If you're moving to a new physical PC, you might want to consider Windows Easy Transfer. It's a consumer-grade tool that makes the transition easier. It pulls the information from the old machine and deposits it on the new machine. For the enterprise, Microsoft introduced User State Migration Tool. It's a great tool that can highly automate the transition from one physical machine to another. Now, that concludes this session. We covered 32-bit versus 64-bit operating systems. We talked about file structure and some core components of Windows operating system. And then we also talked about the upgrade path. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm looking forward to doing more.